the expansion pack Arms of Tyranny was recently released so I wanted to redo this video that goes over the tutorial for Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, when I first got into the game I went through this tutorial and found it very confusing so I want to walk through all these steps and give a better explanation than what you get from reading these tutorial guides that pop up. So I'm not going to read the stuff on the screen and you can see what these controls do. What I'm going to do is talk about the different objectives and what they mean. So before we get into that, let's talk about the overlay on the screen. So I'm going to minimize this for a second. When you minimize that, it drops down here into the bottom right corner in case you lose it. Arguably the most important thing on this overlay screen is up here in the top right there's a little music note. If you click that it'll fly out the music player and you can skip tracks. You can select exactly what you want or my favorite thing to do is to pause it and put on YouTube in the background. But I'm going to leave it play for this because it's good background music. In the top center here is your notification area. This alerts you when you have different choices you need to make. On the top left, these are a bunch of tabs that open up different windows to modify different things. We'll get into more above that are a bunch of different measurements and we'll get into that later too. Uh, back to the top right you see the date and below it there's this little bar with five sections you can click. So two through four are set speeds and by speeds I mean that this game when you on pause it it does a calculation every hour and this bar sets how fast that calculation is done. If you go all the way to five, it's red. At that setting, it runs as fast as your system can do the calculations. Uh, down here on the bottom is your army interface. Going back up to the top right, if you click on these icons, you can switch between the units in your army, navy, and air force the overview for them. Down here on the bottom right this has a bunch of different overlay maps. If you select those icons that look the same as in the top right it's going to give you a inter different interface and that's more of organizing those forces and then assigning them to different groups. So that's kind of an overview of the layout. We'll go back to the tutorial. And down here with these objectives, they match up to the notifications up here along the top. The first one says no military factories are in usage. So at the top, the little green factory type icon, if you click that, it's going to bring up your production menu and when you select each one of these windows you're going to get a tooltip describing everything. I'm not going to go over that. I'm just going to tell you what I choose and why. So I'm going to hide this and this production menu that came up is equivalent to hitting the wrench icon on the top left. That brings up the production menu and I want to build guns so in this production menu along the top you see an icon for it's an artillery piece icon and a helmet for infantry that gives you your infantry type equipment and then there's a tank for armored vehicles there's a plane for aircraft the anchor icon with the plus is to build ships and then the anchor icon with the wrench is your repair queue. As ships get damaged, they come back into port and need repaired. So if you hit this anchor with the wrench icon, you can choose how many of your dockyards go into repairing ships. 
I like to have my fleet repaired as quickly as possible, so I max it out. If you press and hold the shift key, you can see on this uh, plus and minus for the number of dockyards used, a 10 will pop up when I'm holding the shift key. The shift key is the modifier for that. So you can also use the control key if you just want to do five at a time. And this modifier works in other places too. I increased it so all my dockyards will be used for repair. Right now I have 15 free dockyards, so I'm going to assign them something to build. The first thing I'm going to do is start building convoys. And I'm going to assign five dockyards to those. It's better to have way too many convoys than to not have enough. And once you go to war, the enemy will sink a lot of them. And if you expand to different theaters, you're going to need lots of convoys for shipping supplies. And now that I'm done that, I'm going to look at battleships. And I am going to select a couple of those. Uh, so when you produce a battleship, this menu pops up and... This is new with Arms Against Tyranny. It's the industrial military organizations. So I'm assigning one to build these battleships and they get bonuses from that. Right now, I haven't gotten any experience to modify these different companies. So they're not changing the base design at all. I'm just doing this so that uh, these ships will give that organization experience points that later I can spend in different areas. So back to the military factories. Because that was technically naval dockyards. And now we see down here under objectives that 15 out of 15 naval dockyards are in use. I am going to build infantry equipment and I'm going to produce those with my infantry weapons manufacturer for the same reason as the dockyards. I have 20 to work with. I'm going to start with 10. I'll need lots of guns for what I'm going to do after the Ethiopia campaign is over, but we'll talk about that in a bit. We need support equipment. Uh, guns and support equipment are the basis of your army's needs, especially early in the game. And I've assigned five factories to that. A lot of times I roughly need half as many factories producing support equipment as infantry equipment, depending upon your build. I'm also going to choose one train. Trains are like convoys. If you don't are not in need of them, you don't realize how important they are, but as soon as the enemy destroys a lot of them and you run out, then uh, it's tough to recover. And artillery is very useful. I'm going to put that in there. Trucks are useful as well. They're also part, part of the supply chain. And now I'm going to drag these trucks and trains up to the top with the convoys. And the reason I'm doing this is because factories or dockyards are assigned from the top down. So if something happens and I lose territory or factories are bombed by the enemy, it will affect items made at the bottom of the queue before the top. And so I'm putting artillery and anti-air in here now to build up efficiency. If you look at anything army related, at the top you have this little production bar, well top of the little section for it. And you can see right now it's mostly red. And if you hover over it, this tooltip will come up telling you your production efficiency. And I'm just 
adding in artillery and anti-air to start building up the efficiency so when I start using those items in my infantry builds they are producing efficiently and you can click the arrows to increase or decrease that priority I find it easier just to left click on the name and drag and drop it wherever you want over here towards the middle of each section there is a five times the ten times modifier so when you start having a ton of factories producing these items switching to five or ten stacks them up so that you can increase it without having a bunch of the same item repeated at the top of the section by the name there's a little yellow arrow you can click that if you want to collapse everything down to save space and this plus icon with the number that means that it needs that much equipment for reinforcing your existing troops that can kind of be misleading when you start having different tiers of equipment because your top tier of equipment will try to replace everything sometimes a better place to look is up here along the tabs this little notebook with a pen you click on that that tells you your logistics for equipment types and it gives you a better look of what's going on so along the top when you get past equipment type and status there's a balance icon that's whether you're losing more equipment or building more right now it says that I'm carrying a deficit on support equipment infantry equipment artillery that's not necessarily true since the game just started but what I'm really looking for here is the next column over with the little shed icon at the top it has whatever surplus or deficit of that weapon I currently have and I can see that that's what's needed to reinforce existing troops so while I'm looking at that I will pop up the recruit and deploy menu which is the top here this little tank with the down arrow icon and this will allow you to set the priority of different things going on I'm gonna put reinforcements to high priority they had were yellow that's medium reds hot or greens high and then red is low like to keep reinforcements high priority to keep my field units supplied and then garrisons uh, sometimes I set that low it depends how things are going but usually I just drop reinforcements high and I'm gonna click train for a division when I do that I usually set those low so that they don't eat up my equipment and then it says no location set so click on that and then anywhere you can set them to train will be highlighted in green in your map I'm just going to set those there. And I'm also going to train some cavalry for something I'm going to do later. And add a couple units there. So that took care of queuing up a division for deployment. Now, let's take a look at civilian factories. So up on the top, you see a little factory that is a different icon than the one that was for military factories at your civilian factories click that and you see these tool tips pop up they're very useful and just about anything you mouse over in this game maybe immediately it doesn't pop up a tool tip but if you let the cursor sit there for a second it'll pop something up so back to civilian factories it says 10 out of the 21 are in use right now 10 go to consumer goods that changes based upon different factors in the game. I'm not going to get into that minutia because that's kind of complex and not needed to have fun right off the bat. 
the basis of what you need to know about construction is that each state has an infrastructure level so right now my map overlay is kind of a heat map for infrastructure level the greener it is the more infrastructure it has the infrastructure goes from one to five the higher the infrastructure level the faster anything else will build in that area and the infrastructure level also determines the amount of resources that come from that state so if I'm gonna build something here see so it has infrastructure of 80 percent and that that pops up when I change to these different buildings that I'm trying to do um, so in the middle section here green with a wrench is a military factory and orange with a uh, steel beam is civilian so ideally first I'd go up to the top here and click a road for infrastructure then I'd increase the structure infrastructure to five and then build my civilian factories but in this case this is a special case because I need to choose a national focus I'm going to choose a national focus that increases infrastructure in these states so I'm not going to waste my factories on that I'm going to go ahead and cancel the infrastructure by clicking the X hit OK I'll let that go so now we need to choose a national focus we can get there by the top there's this question mark icon with something else around it that pops up the national focus or you can click on your country's flag in the top left and this flyout has a big box that says select a national focus so clicking on select a national focus will bring up your national focus tree let's minimize this window for a bit we'll close this uh, with Italy I'm zooming all the way back so you can see everything the stuff on the right side is more of the political stuff it's easier to play with Italy if you don't worry about this stuff on the right because that adds in some mini games that make it much more difficult for the beginner with that in mind I'm going to focus on the stuff on the left and it's good to have an idea of where you're going I've played this quite a bit so I know I can get an extra research slot if I come down here to expand national universities to get there I need to start with the Italian highways and that's the focus that is going to increase my infrastructure in the state where I'm building my civilian factories uh, before I left click that and close this window I'd like to mention that along the top are a bunch of different filters you can play around with so for that research slot in order to find it quickly you can click the little beaker icon and it'll highlight anything related to research and then usually most bonus slots have a beaker icon on them as well these other things are research bonuses which are not necessary to worry about for the purpose of this tutorial so start Italian highways and we'll close that tooltip that popped up so now we've done everything except for technologies if you s hit the little beaker icon up in the middle at the top it's telling you you have empty research slots or from the menu on the left you can hit the beaker icon there and now that that's up I'm going to select the technology to research the basic three you always want to start with on the tabs on the top the wrench and the screwdriver engineering 
and select electronic mechanical engineering. The reason we want this is for the research speed bonus. The next one we want is under industry, the little factory icon tab. We want basic machine tools to increase our production efficiency cap. And then same tab, construction one. And this fourth one's kind of a bonus where you could go to a couple different areas. There are pl three pretty safe ones you want to get pretty quick off the bat. Uh, one of them is the artillery for 1936. Another one is support weapons one, 1918. And these tank ones are pretty important, and so are support companies. But the uh, the third one I'm really thinking of is the radio here for the reinforcement and coordination rate. And we can't grab that until electric mechanical engineering has finished. So, with that in mind, I'm going to take the support equipment one. And when you click research, with these different research technologies, if you see a little colored beacon as part of the icon, that means you can select the military industrial organization to uh, speed up how long it takes. So up here in the top of the pop-up window, you see how many days it takes. If I select one of these companies, you're going to see that that decreases from 158 to 142. On the downside, it's taking some political power, which at this point we don't need to talk about, but just mentioning it. And the other thing you get is experience points for that military industrial organization. So, that completed step one of the tutorial. So now it's going to take us down to Ethiopia and start having us work on the invasion of Ethiopia. As uh, I moved the screen down, you can see we checked off that first objective. The way I like to move the screen is just take the mouse cursor to the edges and it'll move. You can also use the arrow keys. So the second thing we need to do is select the divisions. In order to do that, you take your mouse cursor, the finger, left click, and you start dragging a box. And I drag it over that region. And when I released it, it selected all 18 divisions. So now what I'm going to do is go down here to the bottom, the smaller plus icon with the that's green. I'm going to right click on that and it makes an army. Now you can see the slightly bigger portrait with the plus icon. It's now flashing green and I am going to right click on that. And now I've set up an army with the field marshal making or an army group with the field marshal commanding all of that so now I'm gonna click on the army group you can see as I click between the smaller portrait and the bigger one the selection changes and that's between the army and the army group I'm gonna click on the smaller one so I get just the army and then up here on the top left where it says army one and click to assign I'm gonna click there and this is where I'm assigning a general to the army when you look at this screen the most important part is the filtering on the top right the two swords are their attack the shields their defense and then the horse is planning and jerry can is 
supply consumption. These things can be very important depending upon where you're fighting, but in general, for all we really care about, we want the best attackers so that this goes quickly. Another thing to note about these generals is below their name, they have different ribbons that have different traits. Some of the important ones are like this wrench icon means that they're an engineer and they have better attack over a river and forts. Not important for this tutorial, but something to keep in mind if you get into this game. And the next uh, engineering one, he has a fortress buster and for attacking a forts he gets 15% bonus. But for now, we're going to pick the top one since he has the best attack. Now with that in place, I'm going to click on the bigger portrait that's empty for the entire army group. And then similarly, I'm going to click on assign and choose my best field marshal. Okay, so now it wants us to create a front line, which means we need to talk about the battle plans. You can assign battle plans on the level of individual armies, which is usually my preference, or I'm going to go down here and make another army group, or not, not another army group, another army. I'm going to select those seven troops, right click to add to an army, and then now that I have this empty portrait, I'm going to left click on that and drag it beside my existing army and you can kind of see how they bump up against each other now when I release that left click it's going to drop in and you can see how the field marshal has this box that encompasses both of these armies that means that he's directing both of them underneath the field marshal's portrait you see two of five so he can have up to five armies underneath him. And you can go over these limits, but you don't want to, because then it stops applying the bonus that the field marshal gives to the armies. And this game is really about stacking as many bonuses as possible. For the general, you can see 18 of 24. That means that he can command up to 24 divisions without having his bonuses lost. So now I'm going to click on my new army and assign a general. Uh, with all these generals being not great, I'm going to choose Yugo because he has well, let's see. Yep, he has the best supply consumption. And fighting in the desert of Africa, that's kind of important. So, now we'll talk about the battle plans. Uh, if I click on the field marshal, it selects both armies and you can see this flashing icon here is to set a front line. The hotkey for that is Z. So if I click that, you can see if I mouse over any borders, it highlights it. And if I left click there, then it drops in that front line. And because I did it at the field marshal level, it has two armies and zooming in on this front line you can see the smaller army is here on the left of seven divisions and this red one is the larger one with eight divisions if I play the game from here then all these divisions in the north would flop down here into the south and we could attack that way but that is not what I want to do so I am going to delete that order. And if you left click on it, 
you can then left click on whatever borders you want to delete if you right click on that trash can then you can delete all orders at once so I went ahead and deleted that I'm going to select this army in the south I'm gonna hit the Z key left click on that front line now I'm gonna hit the X key which is the shortcut for this offensive line that's glowing and I am going to press and hold the right mouse button over the province where I want them to move and drag a line across everywhere I want them to go <laughs> and then down here on the battle plans you see the two arrows if you click that and open it it's how they execute the battle plans I want them to execute them aggressively because I want to crush Ethiopia so I'm gonna change that and choose the aggressive icon with the two filled in arrows and in areas that don't have very good supply you always want to choose that so that they push forward even when they're not fully supplied and try to get the battle over with in better supplied areas a more balanced battle plans more prudent you won't lose as many troops and those are the two most used I well three most used the front line offensive line and aggressiveness um, another one to mention real quick are these three arrows in a row is like a spearhead attack that can be useful for making pockets if you don't want to micromanage it to the right of that you have a shield with three dashes that's a fallback line that's useful for digging in along a river or forts to try to stop the enemy when they get there and then this shield with a flag for area defense is also useful quite a bit so when I click on that it gives you a warning telling you it's going to remove these orders that's fine now it hasn't removed the orders yet until I left click on a province or state or region or whatever you'd like to call it and then you can choose what points you want them to guard and it'll tell you how many divisions are needed to um, efficiently do that and that's really just a bare minimum estimate if you take junk divisions and throw them in for guarding the coastline and the enemy attacks with something better you'll still get a pushed aside even if you have the more than the minimum number and then as you um, deselecting these different icons you hover over them that's what they're gonna guard it's useful for later in the game I just kinda wanna mention it while we're going over the battle plans so back to Z and then X so back to the army in the north gonna hit Z left click the front line hit X right click and drag and I'm gonna set them to attack aggressively too now it wants me to change the air base so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring a lot of planes down here because there's a bunch up here and I want to efficiently destroy Ethiopia so what I did is open up the air menu down here in the bottom right this plane left click on it brings up the strategic air map you can also use F3 as a shortcut to bring it up and then I drug a big selection box around all my planes and did a right click down here on the airport that I want them to go to so now I want to consolidate them the shift key on pauses the game and then it runs at the speed I have selected up here in the top right I'm gonna hit shift to on pause and all my planes are flying in 
So now I want to drag a new selection box over that airport because I didn't have the original three squadrons selected. And I'm going to consolidate them. And this menu up here would be like the fourth one down from the top on the left now. But uh, it's the air wing menus with all of them selected. You have a couple arrows merging. That's to merge air wings. I'm just going to hit G. G's the hot key to do that. So now that they're all merged up, I'm going to take a couple of these and delete them. I'm going to take some tactical bombers and then some fighters. I have those two selected. And the way I did that was I clicked on the first one, left click, press and hold the shift key, and click on the second. And then I'm going to left click the delete icon, hit OK. And that way I have some planes in reserve to reinforce these squadrons as they take losses. Now I'm going to left click and drag a box over that airport again to select all my air wings. And I'm going to have them do pilot exercises. In this menu bar where it has the different actions for airplanes, the first one has a little gold fighter with the green gear around it. That's the exercise. If you just left click that, they're going to exercise indefinitely. And that's going to be a waste of fuel and air accidents are going to uh, uh, destroy a bunch of your planes. So what you do is you press and hold the shift key and then you left click it and you can see the icons different this time. I'm going to undo that and click it again. You can see it just has that pilot exercise air con icon on each row. If I redo that while pressing shift key, you can see now there's that little red cancel with the icon. And what that means is that once they achieve oh, their third tier status, then they'll stop exercising because they can't train to get more experience than that. Which brings up the point of experience level with planes, ships, and armies when you select your squadron, division, or ship. You have a picture of it on the left and then to the right of that is an experience level icon. Right now you can see that this clover leaf means they're rookies and if you hover over and see the tooltip they take um, negative modifiers because they are rookies. So by training them up it'll change the modifiers. So I'm going to let them train up before we send them into battle and I'm also going to send the rest of the troops down to Ethiopia. And on in the bottom right hand to go back to the army overlay you see this little infantry guy you can click him or you can hit F1 and now in the top we have this little icon with three guys saluting if you click that it's gonna cycle through your divisions that are not part of an army yet if you press and hold the shift key and left click that it's gonna select everything that's not in an army group yet So now I'm going to right click on the icon to assign that to an army. And now all 21 divisions are in their own army. I'm going to go up to assign and choose. Yeah. I'm going to choose the guy that has the bonuses, the engineer and the fortress buster. And then I'm going to hit Z, left click on this battle line in the south, hit X, right click and drag. And 
I'm going to tell them to train. So I'm going to press and hold the shift key. This is just like with the aircraft. And then left click this gear with two guns crossed in front of it. And now I'll start them training. Looking at this army on the left, you see each division with the experience level. Uh, Cloverleaf is green. And then the next rank up above it, which I'm not sure what that'd be called. Call it a ribbon. That is trained, and then that gives it a 0% modifier. And then the ribbon with the star is a regular. That's when they get a positive modifier in combat. And with training like this, you can take them up to experience level 3. There's two more levels above it, however, they can only achieve those through combat. Now that I have them set to train, if I press the shift key to on pause, on the left hand side here, these green bars, you're going to see it drop on anybody that needs to train up to a regular. And then the rest of them dropped because they're moving. Um, so that wasn't a very good example. Okay, so let's take care of this tool tip real quick. If you hover over the buttons at the bottom, you're going to see what uh, each choice does to modify your statistics. In this case, I'm going to choose the bottom one because it has uh, it's better for my logistic chain and I want to train up my troops a little bit anyways. The reason I don't start training these other two um, army groups is when a division's training it drops that green bar and that green bar is equivalent to stamina so if the enemy attacks a division that's training you pretty much lose immediately and I'm gonna unpause and let some of these units train and we'll see the different divisions coming down to the bottom that's convoys moving them down here and the national focus has completed with the national focus done you can now see in the top we have a warning saying that it is done so we'll hit OK and we'll select another national focus before dealing with this message and we're going to choose Railway Innovations. So let's see what we get. Uh, so this one does not happen all the time. It looks like if we're going to crush them, we should probably just hit no because we don't necessarily want them to take over half the state. Uh, and we'll let this run through a little bit. Going back to the army. They're getting in place. And now that they're in place, you can see the green bars on the units that are fully trained is now increasing because they're not moving. And that warning that popped up about a general being wounded or ill, those happen all the time. Not necessary to worry about them as a beginner. So back to these bars. The green one's basically stamina, and the red one is a measure of fighting strength. These units, like these infantry units at the bottom, where the red bar isn't quite all the way up to the top, means that they're missing equipment. If you hover over it, you can see what they're supplied with, 
and what they're awaiting to be delivered. So, let's go back to the air menu and see how these aircraft are doing. Okay, they're all trained up. With that in mind, I'm ready to start the offensive. So with these fighters, I'm going to click this air wing, and I'm going to go up to the top, this icon with the fighter, and uh, the top, er, okay, sorry about that, I had to cough. So, back to this fighter wing, this uh, icon with the fighter, and a gun sight is for air superiority gonna click that that sets this fighter group what they're doing and now I'm gonna go to a uh, region the air regions are different than the army regions are different than in, well Navy and air overlap somewhat and the sea regions are the same as the air regions that are there but anyways I'm going to right click on the region where I want them to operate in this case, it's uh, Dana Kill. I'm going to go to the next one, sign air security, right click over Ethiopian Highlands. Um, this group is a tactical bomber group. I'm going to set them to do close air support and logistic strikes. And then I'm going to assign them to an army instead of a region. So down here on your generals, I'm going to right click over the plus plane icon. Go into the next one, more tactical bombers, set them up the same way. And then, well, right or left click on that icon will assign them to an army group. But I am giving each general a group of tactical bomber well close air support and the reason I want to give them close air support is because it will give them an attack bonus okay so let's see where we are in the tutorial oh it wants all six assigned to Dana Kill. Alright, so that took care of that tooltip. But that's not what I want to do. I'm going to reassign my wings to the armies. And if you're looking at your air wings when they're assigned to an army, it says which army and it has a little icon here saying it's attached and then the ones that are not attached to an army say what region they're operating in so now that those are set I'm going to go down to my third army group or not army group but third army I'm going to tell them to stop training because I want that green bar I call it stamina but it the game calls it organization I want that to increase and then looking at these different divisions if we take the bottom one you have the organization slash stamina the equipment a little icon representing the division you have the experience level and next to that is the plan preparation attack bonus. When we set up a front line and an offensive line, that's the battle plan. And the, if you wait long enough, the general planning the attack, it'll fill up this blue bar next to the experience. And then next to that is a little icon telling you whether or not they are acclimatized and if we go up to one of these divisions that hasn't been training next to that icon is a little shovel and shield and that is the entrenchment 
units that are entrenched receive a defensive bonus. So, now we are going to execute the battle plan. And I have all of them set to execute aggressively so that we quickly crush Ethiopia. Looking at the top of the generals, you can see there's a, a little play button. The one on the left and the right have a check mark saying that they outmatch their enemy. If you hover over it, the tooltip will give you details. The middle one says the plan is risky with the three yellow dots, and that's because he doesn't realize that the army to his right is operating on the same front. And then you can hit the red buttons to stop the execution of plans. So I'm going to hit all those to go and unpause the game. And if you watch, you can see little lines. Red lines means that that's where they're attacking. Green lines are where they're moving. And blue lines are where divisions assisting another one. And I click through all those notifications because they don't really matter. The bubbles, the battle bubbles, the um, they're either red, green, or yellow with a number in them. They're telling you kind of what the status is. If it's green, that means you're going to win. If it's yellow, it's iffy. And if it's red, you're definitely not. And the number is about how many turns it should last. Uh, with that notification saying our research is done, we need to go in and select the next one. After you do this mechan or electric mechanical engineering, you want mechanical computing. And that's because both of these give you research speed bonuses. And there's another notification saying we're doing well. Oh, the pop-up that I just clicked OK on is actually a national focus. And that one's kind of a special one. And that, like these top three here in the political area, which path you take, you don't have to click on it and complete it. How you do in Ethiopia will automatically decide. There are some national focuses that you can bypass like this in each country you play as. Uh, quick aside, I have a lot of political power, so I'm going to do this, which isn't important for the current tutorial, but I'll talk about in a different video. So, back to the tutorial, we need Ethiopia to surrender. Uh, this pop-up is because I am justifying a war goal on Yugoslavia, but that's not important for this tutorial. Another national focus is complete, so let's take a second to work on another one. With national focuses, if you don't choose one immediately, you can bank up to 10 days. But if you wait longer than 10 days, then you're wasting time and you're losing out. With doing research, it's a 30-day window. And everything about this game is this is because I'm justifying a war goal again but everything about this game is stacking bonuses as quickly as possible and trying to squeeze out every advantage you can so we'll let this play through and it should be over pretty quick And that was telling me your research is done. And the second research. So I clicked on the little beaker icon for telling me, warning me 
I need to choose some more research. And here you see the empty slots and the green bars building up at the bottom. And that's just banking time. So I hit the space bar to pause the game when that's full. And now I can select a new technology. With that first one that was done was basic machine tools. So after that's done, I definitely want to grab one of these two under industry. If you're the United States, you're going to want to go with concentrated industry. But otherwise, you usually want to go with dispersed because you're going to be bombed. And then we'll fill up this one too. We're going to go over to engineering and grab the radio. And then unpause the game and let it play further. So, Ethiopia capitulated. And now we have our uh, peace conference over overlay. On the left hand side is everyone you defeated. On the right hand side are all the winners because it was only us fighting Ethiopia. The peace conference is really simple and we get everything we want. So looking at this the menu on the left, make demands. The default is to take states. So expanding Ethiopia, I can select all and it puts my flag on each region. And if on the right, I hit submit demands, then I take all these states and they'd become part of Italy. Ethiopia is kind of a worthless area to me, so I'm going to cancel taking them as states, and I'm going to puppet it. And the reason Ethiopia is kind of worthless to me is once I go to war with Britain, they're just going to swallow this area. So I can make Ethiopia a puppet, and if I keep them out of the war, then... Great Britain won't immediately swallow them. And I can always annex them later in the game if I want. So what I'm going to do is go to the little puppet icon, the one in the middle that looks like a rook. I'm going to select all. And then under additional demands, I'm going to choose little oil, tire, uh steel ignit icon and I'm gonna hit stack on because I want all the resources and then under the little factory icon I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna stack on all the factories for war reparations and I am going to suck dry the resources while ensuring that they stay out of the next conflict I'm in so, with that done, I'm going to submit my demands, and then I'm going to confirm and exit, because I got everything I wanted, and there's no one else in this peace conference. So, now we have, here's another national focus bypass. If we look over here, it's more on the political side, let me get rid of some of these pop-ups. Uh, oh, not under the political. That was over here on the left. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, another one we can bypass. Saves us some time. If we're going to go that route and research, I would recommend staying in this area for local stuff and then also army and naval power um, okay close this out let's look at the tutorial again and this one is the tutorial tip that I hate the most because it's pretty pointless so what it's saying is to select some divisions, at least four. I'm going to drag, left click and drag my box over this group here. That'll give me six. I'm going to right click 
on this tile that has a port that it's putting an arrow at. On pause the game. And they're going to move there. All right. Now what it's saying is that I need to choose another port where I want them to go. Coming up to Italy. Uh, with those, I still have those six divisions selected. I can right click on any port and you can see that it gave me a move icon. So with that, that gives me, completes the tutorial. And we'll hit continue. And before I close up this video, I'm going to tell you why I think that is the worst tooltip. And that's because if I select an entire army, and I do my Z for a front line, and left click here, I can do the same with these guys, just to move them out. Hit, I clicked on that army and hit Z and selected front line, select my last army. These guys, I'm just going to do an area defense to move them up here. And once that's done, if I unpause the game, you can see all these divisions are moving towards the ports. And then they'll jump on ships and move up there. And there they go. So, the tool tip that they gave us, I never use. I just assign my armies where they should be. And that concludes the tutorial. I'll do another video where I go more in depth with working on these different things. And I'll talk about why I do everything I do.